All right, guys, welcome back. Today's gonna be a fun day. We are gonna be comparing the AP2 Honda S2000 to my AP1 S2000. This is an 05, I have an 01, literally 100,000 miles <laughs> and a few years separates these two cars. So this has about 46, 47,000 miles on it. Mine has 146,000 miles on it, which is a pretty cool uh, comparison. So we can see how my interior has aged with time and a lot of use and how Daniel's interior has aged with time and, and minimal use. So we've got Daniel here, moccasin driver, and Sonny from M Tech YouTube channels. Uh, we're also gonna be filming this beautiful E36 M3. Let's hop inside this S2000, but first let's walk you around it and kind of show you guys some of the visual differences. So in the back here, first thing we can see, we've got oval exhaust tips instead of my slightly dented round exhaust tip. Kind of a cool difference there. Also a completely painted rear bumper. Moccasin driver has these nice looking mud flaps on here or rock guards. Might have to get a set of these for uh, the winter. We'll see. Also 17 inch wheels come standard on the AP2s. 16s came standard on the AP1s. I have kind of a strange tire size on my S2000. I have 205s all the way around, but uh, the AP2 comes with 215 45 R17s up front and 245 40 R17s in the rear. So a staggered setup. On the inside, you'll notice some more differences, a different steering wheel, center console area here, a silver radio cover, which look, looks really nice, and a different shift knob than my AP1. Otherwise, mostly the same interior. See on my car, everything's pretty worn out, but uh, not sure how this got like that. Must have Previous owner must have had a very aggressive wedding ring or something, but uh, you can see the differences with the center console. This should be kind of a matte uh, silver. It isn't. And then the completely metal uh, shift knob here. Everything else, mostly the same between these two cars. Of course, this is a 2.2 liter VTEC four cylinder. This is a two liter. AP1 has a 9,000 RPM redline. AP2 is, what is it, like 8,200 RPM? So we've got a little bit more torque in this AP2. Let's go drive it, see what the differences are behind the wheel, and uh, we'll give you guys our thoughts. This might be the cleanest S2000 I think I've ever driven. Some differences in the gauge cluster too. That's cool. This is also Daniel's first time driving an AP1 today. So excited to get his thoughts at 9,000 RPM. Let's go. You ready? All right, let's do it. We're gonna do windows up for better audio. I gotta say guys, it's days like this that make me love my job and what I do and the fact that I get to bring all of you along for it. I've spent minimal time in AP2 S2000s, mostly just driven John Wong's on track. Haven't really spent much time in, on the street in them. It's cool to see a slightly different rev counter here. Never really registered that difference in my head. This car feels tight as a drum. torque here. The difference isn't huge though, it's subtle.
perfect inputs, really crisp downshifts. This car is completely stock, no modifications. Just a little bit less drama here with the AP2 versus the AP1 in that 9,000 RPM red line. Like we've been saying in the last few S2000 videos, AP2, better sports car, AP1 could be the better S2000. There are some advantages though to going with the AP2 cars. They're a little bit more resilient for track duty. Engine, drivetrain, differential transmission, it's all a little bit stronger for heavy duty use. to do a few upgrades to my car to make it a little bit better suited to the racetrack given its mileage but I think if you want kind of a plug-and-play car that you can take out and you don't have to do as many things to to make it track worthy or at least track reliable AP2 is probably a better buy for most people for me though I just can't resist that 9,000 rpm red line so I had to go AP1 and with the car that I bought the price was right it's a driver, not quite an investment car like this is. I can also feel some suspension changes here with the AP2 S2000. Much softer rear spring rate. Suspension's a little bit more supple and controlled over bumps. Every year they produced the S2000, they kept lowering that rear spring rate just a bit to make the rear end a bit more predictable. Steering feels a little bit better on these 17 inch wheels too. A bit more direct. I have slightly better feel through the rim. A great car especially in yellow I love the way this thing looks the paint is near perfect the interior everything is held up so well over time it really goes to show if you take good care of your car it will hold up versus whatever was going on in the interior of my s2000 <laughs> six gear 3000 rpm definitely more torque here is so smooth no vibrations or rattles I still have a little bit of clutch buzz in my 2001 s2000 this really comes on cam around 6,000 rpm really starts to pull hard That's nice. A little bit more storage space there. Yeah, this definitely feels faster than my car. It is nice to have that extra power. And despite the mileage difference, there are definitely some more refinements here in this AP2 S2000. Especially in terms of noise, vibration, harshness. This car is just a little bit more refined, less raw, more modern feeling. And uh, I, don't know, I like it still. This is still just one of the best sports cars you can buy at any price, I, I argue. The 
this was such a peak era for Honda and they did an amazing job in the development of these cars. When the S2000 came out, people complained that it was a little bit too hardcore, not as livable as the competition. I can see that Honda made some changes and kind of went a different direction with this AP2 car. Overall, this is a more comfortable, livable, and a little bit more sane of a vehicle. Of course, it's an absolutely mint example, and it goes to show if you do spend a little bit of extra money, you can get a really, really nice car that will treat you well for years to come. Ultimately, my advice for people out there who are looking at these cars, and with any used sports car, I always say get the newest and nicest example that you can afford. If you really want that 9,000 RPM redline, if you really want that extra rawness from your driving experience, I can't recommend the AP1 highly enough. But if you want just a few more creature comforts, a bit more refinement, and maybe a bit better reliability, this AP2 is probably the better buy overall. so easy to drive. This shifter still just one of the best gearboxes in terms of feel ever made. Engine loves to rev. Throttle response is amazing. <laughs> it still has pretty noticeable VTEC changeover around 6,000 RPM. Just a lovely driving experience. I missed having a convertible so much. guys those are my thoughts on this super clean 2005 ap2 s2000 what a pleasure to get behind the wheel of this big shout out to moccasin driver go check out his youtube channel he does some pov drives much like i did when i first started uh just just the car just the car doing the talking and i appreciate that we're going to drive this e36 m3 which is also his and uh we'll do a separate video on that so stay tuned for more from today and we might just do a little rip in my AP1 2001 S2000 on the way out of here to show you guys a bit of comparison if you haven't seen any of those videos. Cool.
We'll just leave the key there so it doesn't complain. Now, one thing we didn't do is show you guys under the hood. Let's take a look real quick. Yes, <laughs> a little bit more gold in the valve cover. Like to see that. Boy, this is just so almost factory fresh condition. Pretty awesome. All right, we're gonna go for a quick drive in my 2001 AP1 Honda S2000. We've already talked about all the differences. Just want you guys to briefly experience the change between 2001 and 2005. A little bit more raw, visceral here. More sound, vibrations, and of course, pretty big difference in mileage. But such a fun car if you want just a bit more of a raw and engaging driving experience. There's that clutch buzz. <laughs> feels a little bit better in that AP2. Part of that is being on 17-inch wheels and the rest of that is just it being a much fresher car. But it's not bad in this AP1 on the 205 with tires. it's all about 9,000 rpm all right guys we'll leave you there with this video thanks again for watching you made it this far appreciate the support i'll see you guys in the next one take care